The year 2024 is crazy, people. I never thought we would see the day when a former player would be beefing on social media with his former coach. But we got that here, people. We got RG3 versus Dre Gruden. Primetime on X last Twitter beefing. And it's crazy how this thing even started because all Jay Gruden was doing was minding his own business. He was watching the Philadelphia Eagles get embarrassed by the Tim Bay Buccaneers in the wildcard round, seeing the Buccaneers blitz Jalen to hell. And all he said is, if I ever put a QB through what Philly is putting Jalen through, I apologize. Pick up a blitz. Didn't mention anything about RG3, right? And here RG3 goes with the say what? And of course he has to, you know, make himself a meme because this is RG3. And then... I would have thought this was the end of this interaction because Jay Gruden is a former head coach and RG3, you you know, like, I don't even think he was expecting a reaction because if you're a head coach, you're a lot older than a guy like RG3. So you would think that you going back and forth with a former player of yours on social media would be a little bit beneath you. You will have much better things to do with your time. But no, he clapped back. He said, you weren't prepared, Robert, with the question mark. Ooh, RG3, you weren't prepared? You weren't prepared? And RG3, he said, you told me you didn't know how to coach a QB who could throw and run like me. So looks like you weren't prepared, Jay. And he got the little bean with the, the fishing hat, you know, and, and Jay Gruden clapped back. Oh God, it, it gets it, it gets worse from here, people. He says, you are right. We didn't have a good enough staff. Sorry, hope all is well with you. I don't know about that, Jay Gruden. Didn't have a good enough staff? I mean, RG3's two offensive coordinators, the first one when he was with Mike Shanahan was Kyle Shanahan, and then his second offensive coordinator under Jay Gruden was Sean McVay. And when he was playing under Mike Shanahan, not only did he have Kyle Shanahan as his offensive coordinator, but he had Matt LaFleur or Mike LaFleur. I, I get them mixed up, but one of the LaFleurs as his quarterback's coach, it was the current head coach of the Green Bay Packers. And then the wide receivers coach was the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, Mike McDaniel. So I, I felt like the Washington Raskins at the time had a pretty good coaching staff around RG3. So I don't know if I can agree with you on this one, Jay Gruden, but let's continue because we got some more awards. RG3 has a podcast. You guys should check it out. Really good podcast, by the way. And he said that Jay Gruden told him to, after a loss, to go ahead and call out his teammates to the media. And RG3 apparently did this. This is his words, not mine. And when he called out his teammates doing what Jay Gruden allegedly told him to do, you know, Jay Gruden went behind his back and just completely burnt them to the national media and to the locker room. Now, I don't know how true this is. And like all of us who aren't in the NFL, we don't know how situations like this transpire so we can only go off what rg3 says but jay gruden responds he says you really want to play this game you really want to play this game man I i'm eager to know what jay gruden's side of the story is because he came out on his podcast and he didn't really say too much you know he kind of just tried to you know de-escalate the situation but you know what they say there's two sides to every story so RG3 has his side of the story, but what's Jay Gruden's side of the story? You know what they say? You got two sides of the story, and then you got the truth. What's the truth of this? We're about to get to it. You weren't good enough. Kirk was better. Cleveland didn't want you. Baltimore didn't either. Quit blaming me. I agree with Jay Gruden on this, and I love RG3. You know, I love watching him as a player at Baylor, early his rookie season with the Redskins and I, I I even enjoy him as a commentator in the analyst even though some of his things can be a little bit corny but sometimes they can be a little bit funny too but Jay Gruden is right about this RG3 just wasn't good enough and RG3 doesn't take enough accountability for the way his career went and the people who defend RG3 they always say Washington ruined them 
They put him in a scheme that only used him as a running well. All Kyle Shanahan did was put RG3 in the system that best utilized his talent. It's not like RG3 was this great passer. And after he suffered that injury after his rookie season, it was well reported and it's out there for all you guys who want to look it up that he wanted to become a pocket passer, something that he's not. You see, the offense that Kyle Shanahan and Mike Shanahan had designed for RG3 was an elementary offense. It was pretty basic, but it was a little bit hard to stop because nobody really seen the offense like that at the time. You had Alfred Morritt, fellow FAU alum who was toting the rock, who was a pro bowler at running back. And then you had some pretty talented receivers around RG3 as well. So they had a pretty solid offense. Plus, he had Trent Williams in his prime. Young prime Trent Williams at that before he left for San Fran. So there was talent there. But why didn't it work out for RG3 if this was such a bad situation? Why did Kirk Cousins come and ball out with this same coaching staff? He balled out when Sean McVay was calling plays. And he was way better than what RG3 was outside of his rookie season in Washington. So if RG3 is bad with Jay Gruden and his staff, why was Kirk Cousins able to become one of the most highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL with them being his offensive coordinators and their head coach? I mean, he has Sean McVay, people. Sean McVay is one of the greatest offensive minds in the history of the game. So how couldn't you not make it work with him? So I'm not saying that all this is on RG3. You know, Jay Gruden wasn't a good coach. Neither this is another story about Jay Gruden that I would love to hear about how him and one of his running backs kind of were messing with the same broad. And when he found out about it, he benched the running back. And that running back happened to be their best pass protector. And him not being in the game caused Alex Smith to suffer that devastating leg injury that nearly took his life, pretty much. So uh, it's like it's not like this dude was a great coach neither, but let's not make it seem like, you know, Jay Gruden is the villain here and RG3 is the superhero because there are a lot of people who are Redskins fans who always tell me that RG3 wasn't really that great of a person. That's what people think. You know, he had accountability problems. You know, he kind of was seen as a little bit too cocky at times. He thought he was better than everybody else. And that's just what a lot of Washington fans or former Redskins fans tell me. But I do believe that there's truth to a lot of the things that both of these two dudes are saying. I do believe that RG3, there were certain things that he was lacking that he needed to be successful as an NFL quarterback. And part of growing as a person is being able to be accountable for the mistakes and decisions that you make so you don't repeat them in the future. I mean, he went to Cleveland, got a second chance, and although the Browns weren't great, you know, he was a former first-round pick. And the injury definitely took a lot out of RG3. He definitely wasn't the same player. But, you, you know, like, for the people who say Washington got him hurt, it's like they got him hurt utilizing him the best way they knew how in the best way they could he wasn't a great passer he never was somebody who was dissecting defenses who really understood coverages he's not even as the same he's not even on the same level as a guy like Lamar Jackson they have to kind of dumb the playbook down for him which is why he was such a great mentor for a guy like Lamar Jackson because Lamar Jackson kind of went through a similar thing the only difference is that Lamar Jackson has just become a way better quarterback than what RG3 ever was. He's better than RG3 in every phase. Running the ball and throwing the ball. He's a way better passer than what RG3 ever was. RG3 wasn't the greatest passer. You know, he, he was solid, but he wasn't great. And he was kind of one of those one read and run quarterbacks. And that's why his rookie season was so phenomenal because he had a great staff around him that knew how to put him in the offense for him to not only have success, but for the team to have success. So he got hurt. Yeah, but injuries are just a part of the game. That's what happens. You can't blame Washington for that because they utilized him in the way that best equated for him having success and them winning games. If RG3 was such a great quarterback and he was felt by the coaching staff, why did Kirk Cousins end up being way more better than him? Why did Kirk Cousins get more guaranteed money and why is Kirk Cousins still quarterbacking in the NFL now and RG3 is commentating? 
And I don't have anything against RG3. You feel me? I love RG3. But I, I just feel like enough people, I don't think there's enough people who give RG3 the proper criticism for how his career turned out. Like, yeah, he didn't have great coaching and he wasn't in a great organization, but this same toxic organization that Dan Snyder was running, Kirk Cousins took that situation and he balled out and got paid a lot of money from it. And it's a prime example of how, you know, some people in life can turn oranges and turn it into orange juice. And some people get an orange and they don't even know how to unpeel it, if that makes sense. I don't think it makes sense, but it, it, it sounds like it makes sense. But it, it's just that, you know, everybody gets dealt a different hand in life. And when you get dealt a different hand, even if you have a bad hand, you still got to find a way to win. Now, football is a team sport, and there are a lot of factors that go into winning, but with how good this coaching staff was that RG3 had under Mike Shanahan and Sean McVay being his offensive coordinator under Jay Gruden, like you would have thought that he would have had a little bit more success, even despite the injury. So I, I would love to ask RG3, what could you have done better as a quarterback? You know, we know what Jay Gruden could have done better, but what you what could have you what could you have done better to put yourself in a better situation to have a better career? You know, you had a pretty good career. Everybody remembers what you did your rookie season. You had one of the most polarizing rookie seasons ever. I was a huge fan. I had you on my fantasy team. But it's just that, you know, we never hear enough about what RG3 did wrong and what he could have done better. During his days in Washington, we just hear all this thing about trying to make him the victim. And, you know, I'm not trying to say that it's all on RG3 why his career went the way that it did. You know, the organization did play a part in that. But I just don't think enough people don't give RG3 enough accountability or ask him these kinds of questions because they just think about how talented and how good he was his rookie season. Like I was I made a TikTok about it. And it was somebody who said, man, you don't know shit about football, man. Like, RG3 didn't have nothing. He was in a terrible organization, bro. He had Kyle Shanahan as his offensive coordinator, Sean McVay, LaFleur as his quarterback's coach, Mike McDaniel as his wide receiver's coach. Like, that coaching staff was stacked. And Kirk Cousins was balling out. So why is it that RG3 couldn't ball out for a lot longer, but Kirk Cousins was? There's been plenty of quarterbacks who have come back from devastating injuries. You know, like, I, I just want to know from RG3's perspective, what are things in his career that he could have done better? Like, I, I believe Jay Gruden has a point, and RG3 has some fair points. Jay Gruden wasn't a great coach. Hell, there was another player who was coming at Jay Gruden, who was like a former punt returner for him. Like, Jay Gruden wasn't a good coach. We know that. But I, I'm eager to know what are some things that RG3 did that he could have done better. Because it's not like this dude was well-liked by his teammates. He did have, you know, a little bit of some characteristics that could come off a little bit brash, that could wrong people the wrong way. But I do think that he has pretty good intentions. But from reading a lot of reports about RG3 during his playing days with Washington, when they used to be named the Redskins, you know, they said that, he was a guy that just didn't really seem that authentic. He was kind of corny. But, you know, everybody is a little bit different. But I, I just think that everybody just thinks about how talented RG3 was. And everybody thinks about what he could have been if he never got injured. But nobody thinks that, you know, maybe the system that he was in was the system that was best fit for him having success at the NFL level. People just think that, if you're a great coach, you should be able to turn a quarterback into a great passer. Or if you're a great coach, you should be able to turn any quarterback into a stud. And it doesn't work that way. Kyle Shanahan is a great coach. And he couldn't make it work with Trey Lance. There's been plenty of good coaches who just couldn't make it work with certain quarterbacks. You know, like, I think that more people need to give RG3 a little bit more blame for how his career turned out. It just seems like everybody just wants to victimize RG3, which he kind of was a victim in a sense because the Redskins were a horribly ran organization under Dan Snyder. But at the same time, there are things that RG3 did wrong that if he could have gone back and corrected it, maybe his career would have played out differently. The last thing I want to talk about is this, man.